Winter storm warning remains in effect until 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Heavy snow and blowing snow. Total snow accumulations will range from 12 to 18 inches, with locally higher amounts in the mountains and Vermont's Northeast Kingdom. Travel will be hazardous. Snowfall rates of 1 to 2 inches per hour are expected late tonight into tomorrow morning. Temperatures will also be near zero across northern areas, with dangerously cold June chills of 10 to 20 below zero tonight. My, my, would you look at that? The snow is starting to fall. Whew. Definitely coming down. So I'm in this room that we have here at the farm. It's in the farmhouse that uh, when we did the, the restoration of our house, we never quite finished. And this winter, one of my goals is to try to uh, finish in here. Um, my plan is actually to take a whole bunch of the barn wood that we have from that barn right there and use it to make flooring and uh, potentially wall paneling, or I might just sheetrock that. I don't know. We're going to see. Um, but the idea is I want to make kind of a cool office and, and hangout space. And, and so in these winter months when I'm not too busy, it's been kind of nice to just sort of take a little time here and there and uh, work on this. Right now, I'm just putting in the floor sheathing. And then once that's done, the process will be to start pulling barn wood from the barn and uh, planing it and putting it down just like regular old hardwood flooring. I really don't have a ton of experience with home restoration stuff. So I just came out here to the edge of the cedar swamp. We're in the middle of a pretty good sized snowstorm. And I really just came out here because I wanted to sort of hang out and think a little bit. So they say that the road of life is paved with squirrels that couldn't make a decision. And right now, I'm starting to wonder if I'm one of those squirrels. I'm in the process of trying to build out the business plan for the farm this year. And I admit I'm a little bit struggling with some decisions that I have. Um, what it comes down to is this. There is a good list of things that I wanna try to do and pursue for the farm, but I'm also trying to make sure that I'm keeping things in balance and I don't burn myself out and melt down. On the farm side, it's all about my vision of trying to create a sustainable farm, one that's sustainable economically, emotionally, and ecologically trying to create a balance there. On the homestead side of things, it's about all of the projects that Allison and I have that we wanna do with our home in terms of trying to get closer to our food as well as try to lead a lifestyle that's a bit more self-sufficient than we are today. Trying to balance those two things is important too because if I have too many homestead projects, I'm never gonna be able to tackle the farm stuff. And if I get too deep into the farm stuff, I'm never gonna have that balance I'm seeking as a person. And on top of balancing the farm and the homestead, I have to contend with the fact that I have a full-time job that's off farm. That's the thing that pays our bills. So I guess my gripe is I got a list a mile long here. But my plans with the farm are very much focused on three things. First, as I've grown to learn and understand and become kind of good at taking care of ducks, I really do want to try to expand our duck operation this year. That means hatching our own ducklings here on the farm, and that means selling eggs here on the farm and I wanna expand that. Of course, I am still struggling with frozen eggs, but that's life here in Northern Vermont. The second piece of the farm plan is I wanna to start to do geese. 
Specifically, I want to start to do uh, grazing of geese and raise them for meat. While I love working with the ducks and I, I think they're cool, fun animals, the one thing I don't like about the ducks is that they require a grain input taken here from off farm. Because I'm going through bags and bags of grain that I'm buying and bringing onto the farm. And if I'm really thinking about sustainability with the farm, having an animal like geese who eat grass, um, using natural resources that we automatically have at the farm, that to me is significantly better than having to truck in the grain for the ducks. So the plan with the geese would be I'd get 50 geese, I would raise them from goslings, I would um, you know, put them out in essentially modified chicken tractors, um, move them daily on pasture. I would then sell those geese as meat birds. I don't know, I think people might be into buying a Christmas goose. So focusing on a rotational grazing pattern for the geese where I'm moving them on a regular basis and having them eat, then move to the next day, eat, move to the next day, eat, move to the next day, and almost treat them like they're sheep or cattle. That's an interesting experiment. And as a creative guy who often has a tendency to get a little bit ahead of himself and, and a little bit over ambitious with what he's trying to do, that idea of coming up with a system for rotationally grazing geese is just completely exciting to me. The other business that I'm seriously exploring is hemp production. I, I know I mentioned this a bit in the video I made recently about why I don't want to get a tractor. And, and, and so I think this idea of growing hemp and harvesting it and selling it off for CBD production could be a very interesting evolution for, for me as a farmer. And so I've been researching the heck out of this one and it seems like it's very feasible for us to do here at our farm. Of course, it would be a fair amount of work. So between these three things, the ducks, the geese, and the hemp, I feel like I would have a rather ambitious plan for the farm. Then if I throw on top of it the trees and what we're doing with our permaculture orchard and the continued maintenance of our permaculture orchard and continuing to plant and expand that permaculture orchard, oh boy, oh boy, that is a lot of work. So I very much right now feel like that proverbial squirrel skittering back and forth on the side of the road trying to determine if I should run across or not with this nagging sensation that there's this 18-wheeler barreling down towards me and I'm feeling like I need to just make up my mind and go, or else I'll probably just get run over in the breakdown lane. ducks go to bed. It's gonna be an interesting night tonight. We're supposed to get a lot of snow and it's gonna be really cold so uh, what you gonna do? That's life in Vermont. So I, I'm starting to try to take this mindset of every little bit of discomfort that comes your way like a blizzard or sub-zero temperatures it's just like another little thing that kind of pushes you in the right direction and pushes you on that path towards getting better and being stronger and being more effective and building something really cool. And uh, I'm embracing it. I know that's sort of just a mind trick I'm playing on myself, but I've found it to be pretty effective and uh, makes things a lot more fun when you take that attitude. Isn't that right, Pablo? <laughs> Look at him, Pablo's out there. He's probably not embracing the discomfort. He's like, dude, why don't you get me some food? I could really use some dinner. All right, so now it's about 10 o'clock and it's been snowing pretty hard. I'm gonna go outside and check on the ducks and uh, probably do a little bit of snow cleanup. I find that it's really important to do that snow cleanup um, kind of while the storm's going on. If you wait until everything keeps falling and then stops, you're gonna have so much volume when you get these bigger storms that uh, it's gonna take you forever to try to clear. I find that if you do it like two or three times in the middle of the storm, 
Um, it's really not that bad. It's nice and easy work and you have a lot less of a hassle once all the snow stops. How you doing, little Lil? Huh? How's it going? Hanging out in the snow? Just a little dusty. It's really powdery. On days where it's this cold, I'll often give the ducks some extra water. Good girl. came loose and it dropped the plow. Well, it's been a good day. Uh, it's just a dusting. It'll be fine. Isn't that right, barn cats? <laughs> oh boy. So while on mornings like this, it's a lot more work to live here on a farm in Vermont, uh, I, I gotta say I can't get enough of it. I mean, yeah, just spent the last hour and a half-ish or so clearing snow from various parts of the property. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to do this two, maybe three more times today until it actually finally stops snowing and everything's all cleared. But I love it. The tranquility of it all, the beauty of it all, the stillness of it all. I know it's not for everybody, but for me, as a weirdo here, I kind of like it. Oh my gosh, look at Pablo Barncat. He's looking up. <laughs> He's commando crawling through the snow. Hey buddy, how you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. this. This is the lifestyle that I was hoping for. You know, when I was just a guy sitting in an office building in Washington, D.C., I would dream about what it would be like to be on a farm in the middle of winter, and uh, it wasn't nearly as cool as this has become. And so, I gotta say, I'm just really expressing some gratitude here and just how awesome this has been. And I also want to express some gratitude to you guys. Um, I appreciate so much that you take the time to watch these videos and comment on these videos. You have no idea how much it actually means to me that you're following us here at Goldshaw Farm as we try to build this farm in Vermont. Thanks.